Well, we're heading over to Peter Mullen's place. Oh. Um, Peter Mullen has truly perfected the high art of screwing around in that he has just possibly the world's best automobile collection. Wow. Now you could say, well, what about this collection and that collection and isn't this better? So mm -hmm. no one could actually say that any particular collection is the world's best automobile collection. But certainly Mullen's collection is one of, if not the, right. best privately owned car collections that there is. Bar none. And that's some significant screwing around. No kidding. Check this out. Well, the main part of Peter Mullen's collection lives in Oxnard in this incredible garage, I guess you could call it. Peter Mullen prefers collecting French cars of the 20s and 30s, the Art Deco movement. Art Deco was huge in France uh, in the early part of the 19th century. Not at all. This is Dave Schwartz. He went with us. He's one of my colleagues at Brooks Institute of Photography uh, not that many years ago. The collection is open by appointment only. You have to call ahead and schedule a visit to this building. What do you think of this furniture? Oh my goodness, look at that. <laughs> Peter Mullen collects anything Art Deco, mostly cars, but other works of art, furniture, whatever he can find from that era, provided it's extremely Art Deco-ish, I guess you could say. Now this furniture was designed by the Bugatti family. <laughs> famous for their automobiles, but a lot of people don't know that they also did custom furniture and other art uh, during the Deco movement, including jewelry. Bugatti is so big with the Mullins that we're actually gonna talk about uh, Bugatti in a future show. Uh, this is a sculpture by one of the Bugattis here. He also has collected ceramic automobiles and some incredibly detailed one-eighth scale models of Bugattis. And check this out, a flying Citroen. <laughs> How's that fun? They have a traveling exhibit of Citroens in-house right now. This is something that the Mullins like to do from time to time. The Mullins have also modified the entire so building here to this make uh, uh, the architecture here right. Art Deco yeah, as well. We've seen some of Peter Mullen's collection because there is the Mullen Gallery at the Peterson Museum in downtown Los Angeles. Remember this fun trip? Oh yeah. That was a fun one, wasn't it? But he cycles his cars around, we found out later, to four different locations. Um, but two of those locations are this room in the Peterson, the Mullen Gallery, and then the Mullen Museum in Oxnard. We ran into this Type 35 Bugatti when we were at the Peterson, and because these cars cycle around, we ran into the exact same car when we got to the Mullen Museum in Oxnard. The Type 35 was a legendary car back in its day, winning more Grand Prix races than any car ever, and it was street legal, so you could actually drive it to the race, race it, and then drive home. This is Peter Mullen's best known car, a Bugatti Type 57 SC Atlantique. And he paid $44 million for this car, making it the most expensive car purchase ever. So in a way, we've already done a show on Bugatti because we did the Mullen Gallery down at the Peterson. But uh, we're going to come back on a future show and look at some of these other Bugattis here at the Mullen Museum in Oxnard. What a collection of cars. So as a matter of sort of personal car philosophy, Peter Mullen prefers to leave cars in the state that he bought them in. 
If it's a barn find, he quite often just leaves it as a barn find. If someone else has restored it, he quite often leaves it that way. But then sometimes he will buy and restore a car. I'm glad he didn't restore this one. What do you think of that? Well, it's underwater. <laughs> Well, anyway, while he's best known for Bugatti, any French Art Deco car will be collected. This one's an exception. It looks like a French Art Deco car, but it's an American car. It was built by Gilpin Ford in Van Nuys. Remember Gilpin Ford in Van Nuys? <laughs> we had some fun up there. And Gilpin Motorsport will build anything. They build custom cars, they do all kinds of fun things. And so they decided to build something that looks like a French Art Deco car from the 1930s. And there it is. Now, there was one car here that I really wanted to see, and it's this one right here, Hispano Suiza. The company started in Spain, hence the name Hispano, by a Swiss engineer, hence the name Suiza. <laughs> but years later, they moved the operation to France. Typical of a lot of the companies at that time, Hispano Suiza only built the running gear. They turned the coachwork over to some other company, and a lot of these cars were then layered over in exotic woods. And uh, I've always wanted to see one of these wooden Hispano Suisas. And when I found out Peter Mullen had one up here while well, I was just frankly dying to see it. Boy, these hood ornaments are sure ornate. Their hood ornament is a stork. In that era, that was part of the signature look of these cars, was to have a really neat hood ornament. There's no way of even knowing if this is the body that came on this car when it was first delivered because so many of these owners would get tired of one set of coachwork, send it back to a coach builder and have another body constructed, hanging on to the original body and then later on switching them back. That was a pretty common practice back then, just switching out the coachwork. The running gears were so expensive that that seemed like a way to extend the longevity of the car, just build a new body for it. But it would be truly a shame to see this with any other body on it. Is that beautiful? Oh, I just love those. That is one gorgeous car. And here's another Hispano. This one does not have the wooden coachwork and much more of a sports car look. But uh, again, that's common to see the exact same car with two completely different looks, just depending on what kind of coachwork is there. This seems to be Peter Mullen's favorite car to collect, the Voisin. This is the very first one that was ever built in 1919, serial number one. And here again, he's chosen to just leave it in the condition that he found it. The sort of industrial look of the car is no accident. They intended these things to look particularly industrial, almost sort of a early version of steampunk, if you will. But if you're into Voisin, what better car to find than the very first one? Avion Voisin was actually an aircraft company and they built Europe's very first heavier than air airplane right after the Wright brothers. But later on, they turned to making luxury automobiles. Peter Mullen will kind of abandon his notion of leaving cars alone when it comes to a Voisin. This Aerodyne, which cost almost $2 million, he went ahead and fully restored and even had this uh, special upholstery duplicated exactly so that the car would be perfect as it was originally produced. This is the two-door sibling of that other car, the Aerosport. And here again, Peter Mullen has fully restored the car. And this is one of his prized automobiles here in the collection.
Now this is my favorite Voisin, the C27 Roadster, this beautiful yellow two-door, two-seat sports car with ostrich skin interior. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> After World War II, Voisin decided to build a car for the average person because the French economy was just in the tank. Oh look at that, wicker seats. <laughs> now these I think are my favorite cars in the whole collection, the Delahays. The most art deco of any of the cars. Look at the French curves mm. on that. Is that gorgeous? Those are beautiful. And the choice of colors, just everything about these cars is just stunning. These cars always give me the impression of being jewelry or something impressive. I don't think they were really ever intended to be driven per se. I mean, yes, to some special event, but not transportation. These are showpieces. No kidding. Works of art. I think it's also tragic when you consider that just at this moment, as these cars were being built, uh, Germany and France went to war, and that was the end of all of this. Hmm. And, uh, oh. Just a, sad. Just sad. A tragedy right. on, on levels that we can't even comprehend. This is clearly intended to be a high-performance coupe, I mean, a real sports car. But as I stand here looking at it, I frankly don't care how fast it is or the specifications. I mean, it'd be fun to go for a ride, but isn't it funner to just stand here and look at it? Here's the Tatra, one of the smaller companies in France. It sure has a lot of lines like the Tucker. Doesn't it just? Because the engine's back here like it is on a Tucker. So it's a very similar concept when you get right down to it. I understand Tatra's still in existence, but I don't know much about them. And of course, you can't talk about France and not talk about Peugeot. Oh. And there aren't that many Peugeots in the collection here. Uh, these are the very interesting early Peugeots, but uh, the most interesting element here is this rear-facing hood ornament, a second hood ornament facing the rear. That's different. And this is a Renault Phaeton Landau. A limousine. Wow, look at that. Oh my. <laughs> Renault had a very, very unique look, in largest part because of this nose. They called that the coffin nose. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm not quite sure where that comes from. But uh, Renault had a very, very distinctive look, very elegant limousine. And as we mentioned earlier, they had a Citroën show going on, a traveling thing. And this is interesting, Sonia Delaunay painted this. She was a clothing designer and she just grabbed a paintbrush and painted hers. So I guess you could say that's an object to art or something like that. <laughs> Check out this fun little thing. This was my favorite of all of them in there. It's so fun. I think the hood ornament's bigger than the rest of the car. Just about. <laughs> I guess back then Citroen was a rather playful car. A lot of the cars in the show here are just sort of garden variety Citroen. Mm -hmm. uh, just the sort of thing that you would have seen driving down the road. Nothing special. I really, really like this one. A, I just think it's really cool. But B, I secretly have a 1-8 scale model of this. Oh, my. <laughs> so that's going to be neat. We'll have to do a collector's show on that at some point in time.
And upstairs, it just sort of looks like a Citroen dealership. It does. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> just just the, the regular production cars that they did over the years on display up there. I'm not sure where this show came from, but there's some really wonderful and really unique Citroen in the show here. Fascinating, really. It's funny, this car was banned from the United States because the taillights were too high up. Well, that's crazy. Now they want the pie. <laughs> now they want a high taillight, so they changed their mind, I guess. Now, also upstairs are the race cars. And race cars are really unique because, well, frankly, every single race car is a one-off. What car won what race? So every one of them is going to have a very, very unique history. That makes them automatically collectible. And boy, are there some collectible cars up here. This one has a very rich history, the Delahaye Type 145 from 1937. There was a competition to see who could break the Italian speed record, and there was a one million franc prize to do that. And Delahaye built this car and won the one million franc prize with it. And Hispano Suiza built a race car. You don't normally think of Hispano and race car together. You think of Delahaye, perhaps. But even then, you don't necessarily think of that as a, a famous or infamous race car. Voisin was going to get into the mix as well. A Voisin race car. All of these extremely, extremely unique cars. I mean, you've probably never even heard of them before. I hadn't before we got there. And these are the gems of the collection. Very, very unique show cars. This is a Hispano Suiza Dubonnet Zinnia. Dubonnet built the chassis, Suchik built the coachwork, and Hispano Suiza built the engines. So wow. it's, a, it's, a, it's a real mixed up thing, but it was built just to demonstrate the concept of coil springs in a suspension. And it proved the concept, and immediately all the American car manufacturers adopted the coil spring. But this beautiful, beautiful car was constructed mostly just to demonstrate this new concept in suspension. And the Della A165, this is probably the most infamous and beautiful car in the collection. It was sent to New York City for the 1939 World's Fair. They didn't get the car ready for the show. Uh, the engine wasn't finished, so they put a fake engine in it just for the World's Fair. Then World War II broke out. The engine for this thing was sold to someone else, never got stuck in the car. And then the car never found its way back to France because by then France had been taken over by Germany. So the New York Port Authority just simply seized it and they were going to scrap it out. Oh, no. Uh, and, uh, but they just sold it to someone who just drove it around and beat it up. They stuck a truck engine in it to make it actually run. And eventually Peter Mullen found all the bits and pieces and uh, just a few years ago brought everything together in one room and there it is, finally finished after all of these years. It never got finished in 39. Now it's finished here in Peter Mullen's collection. It has a rumble seat in the back. It's got a heart rubber. Well, this was really something to see, wasn't it? Quite a collection. <sighs> like we said, could be the world's best collection. And we are going to have to come back to see the Bugattis because we just didn't have time today. Well, that was part one. Wow. Of the second museum. Uh, of course, we had already seen the Mullen Gallery at the Peterson. Mm -hmm. And now we've seen about half of the collection at the Mullen Museum. Oh, my. And of those two, that's two of the four Gee. locations where Mullen keeps his cars. We didn't know about that until we got here. And they said, oh, no, the really nice uh, uh, gallery is the one at his office. <laughs> So we're trying to make arrangements to get into that, and that'll uh -huh. be an upcoming show. And then they said the one that's never open to the public is the garage at his house. 
Oh, which well. apparently is a pretty substantial garage, and, yeah. and whatever cars he's driving at the time will be over at the house. And the Gee. rest of the collection kind of cycles between <laughs> the other three locations, depending on what they're doing and what they're up to, wow. and so on. And moreover, there's so much more here that we couldn't show you, so we're going to come back and finish up the museum mm -hmm. on a future show. Right. Holy crap. Yes. Well, anyway, <laughs> if, you, if you haven't been over to the channel, do pop on over to the channel. And if you're not a subscriber, do subscribe, because that will help you find us and us find you. It's all, <laughs> it's all very scientific. And good that way. <laughs> An easy way to get over to the channel, and it will make you a subscriber if you're not already, is to click on the blue button. Are you ready for it? Zing! <laughs> right there, blue button, subscribe button. Well, we're not sure how you found this movie on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring, <laughs> and we will see you here again in a few days mm -hmm. with some more significant high-end screwing yes. around. We'll see you then. Bye-bye. <laughs>